Welcome back to UMass Sports Weekly. We had a tough weekend there with the hockey team. We set a record in that 5-4 to four overtime loss where we saw our, overtime win, excuse me, where we saw our team just play so great and grab that first win against Notre Dame. And then we get ousted in two games against Notre Dame, a tough end to the UMass Minutemen season. So now we have our buy or sell segment with Tommy Kaludi, Liam Byrne, and John Anderson, our lovely UMass hockey reporters for the season. So we're going to start things off with this Hockey East talent that we go against week in and week out. Buy or sell, can UMass compete with this Hockey East talent coming up in the next couple of years? Tommy, we'll start off with you. I'm going to sell that, Chris, right away. I mean, I want to look at who's your goalie for next year. This year, you had Steve Masterlers and Henry Dill. A little bit of a mix-up. I mean, it was kind of chaos, and that's, that's an understatement. Henry Dill had an 8.52 save percentage in the Hockey East. That's disgraceful. His goals against average 4.89. Terrible. Their record on the road in the Hockey East is 1-9-1. That's one win, ladies and gentlemen. All of, their, all of their defensemen this year were a minus. Not one defenseman was a positive skater this year. I mean, this team doesn't have goaltending, and this team's defense is weak. I mean, with Brandon Montour, they're pretty good, but they, they don't have a lockdown defender. I, I really don't think they can compete with teams like BU and BC, and uh, I, I'm, I'm going to have to sell that. Now I mean, we saw that defense and the goaltending was a problem this year. But buy or sell, Liam. Let's hear what you got to say. I'm going to have to sell too, Chris. Uh, like Tommy said, he made a lot of great points. But my point is that the last five seasons in the Hockey East, we haven't been able to compete. 75 conference losses in the past five years for UMass. Boom. Yeah, there's a problem right there with that. So like, like he said, we've seen that UMass has had trouble playing with teams like in the Hockey East like BU, BC, Providence, and UMass Lowell. Chris. 75 losses is not something that has been good for this team. John, you got any uh, optimism over there? Oh, uh, yeah, these two are kind of full of crap. Uh, I would argue uh, that they competed this year for the Hockey East, in the Hockey East. Uh, you know, they won something like five games in the Hockey East. Obviously, that's really bad. That Six of those bad. games, there was one tie, and there were five one-point losses. I would argue that they... They also finished dead last, which he's not going to mm -hmm. tell you in his argument. Yeah, dead last. I won't tell you that, because I, that doesn't matter if they finished dead last. No, they competed with teams, matters. and a lot of times, they went deep into games competing with teams like BU and BC before and they blew it. Up, and so if they eliminate that... And then that, gave up four goals in the last ten minutes. What is your game. definition of the word compete? Oh, they have to be able again. to win. Here we go again. That... That's what's your definition. All right, guys, I'm cutting it short That's here. That's an awful definition. We're going to the next question. Yeah, fine. Whatever. We're going to the next question, and that is, we had Troy Power in here a couple weeks ago for his senior night. That was one of the best games of the season for, for the Minutemen. But now Troy has graduated after his fifth year here at UMass. We have Shane Walsh, who has been a leader on this team, just a natural leader. Buy or sell? We'll start with you, John. Is he our team captain next year? Uh, yes, I buy that because he's going to be the only senior on the team next year, which... I think that reason enough is enough for me. That's like the only really the only point you need because by default he should be captain. But if you want to throw some other things in there, fourth leading scorer, second most shots on the team. I mean, that's that's all you got to throw in there. Go ahead, Liam. I buy it as well. Uh, he's a Massachusetts kid. You know, his standing presence on the team, uh, especially he made that final goal against Notre Dame, uh, making history, college hockey history. And he's a clutch player, team player, reliable player, and. He played all the games this season as well, so you can count on him to be in every single game. Tommy? Well, being the legal guy here, I'm going to throw a little precedent at you. 2012-13, the seniors on the team, Kevin Spiesel and Rocco Carzo, both seniors, both captains. TJ Snyder, Daniel Hobbs, 2011-12, both seniors, both captains. This team has a precedent. John Micheletto set a precedent. He's a fair coach. He knows you're a senior, you're going to have the opportunity to lead this team. I also want to buy one more thing. Look, if Shane Walsh does not be named head captain. Look for Steven Yacobellis and Mark Hetnick to be those, those uh, next two assistant captains. All right, guys. Well, obviously he is the top candidate being the only senior on the team. We know that this team is young. We know that they have to develop, especially at defense and at goaltender. So uh, hopefully Walsh could lead them in, that, in those two spots. But uh, buy or sell. Coach John Micheletto came in a couple years ago. He made changes. He made recruit. He got new recruits. He brought in a whole new system. So will he be the coach next year, buy or sell? I'm going to start with you, Liam. Hmm, this is a tough one, Chris. I'm not going to lie. This is, good. this is a tough one. We're here um, for you. I'm going to have to say I'm going to sell that. He, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I really think 
I mean, I've been. There's been negative feedback from John Nicoletto this season. Negative feedback. Negative feedback. Yes. Oh wow. Negative feedback. What does he have an eBay account? After after all the bad losses that we've had this season, and the the teams that we then the record that we have in the Hockey East the past three seasons he's been here, it's a, it's a problem. So we have a new athletic director. We're looking for another one. Actually, we have an interim, and we're looking for another one. So expect him to make some changes to see if this hockey team can increase their wins in the next few seasons John, with the new it, head coach. John, it seems like you're disagreeing over there. What do you got to yeah, say? Yeah, he stabbed me in the eye with a pen. I, I think he disagreed. Yeah, yeah, Meta a metaphoric, he's a little upset. Speaking. Proverbial so, uh, stabbing of the eye, <laughs> which is what I'm about whale. to do with you. That was, that was, uh, it's called foreshadowing. Uh, Are you an who, English major? Who has, who has John Micheletto recruited for this team? Can you not answer that question? How about uh, Frank Petrano, Steven Iacopelis? Okay, Stoll. are they going to leave if he leaves? No, but look exactly. what he did. Look yeah. what, look. Maybe another coach can come in and do the same exact thing. Easy yeah, but, boys. Yeah, but no one else did. No one else did. Yeah, he no one's been, it. he hasn't he been did. fired yet, or he has no, been What is the question? Yet. Read me the question. Will Coach Micheletto be the coach next no. season? I said no. No, you said, oh, we're looking for an AD, and he's going to, you know, see if the hockey team can get a few more wins in the next few seasons. Quote. That was verbatim. a terrible impression. Verbatim. All right, well, Tommy, we know that I Tommy has had a little bit of a nice relationship with Micheletto this year. He's always in the press conference room giving him, uh, giving him some positive questions to answer. So, Tommy, what do you feel about this? Buy or sell? Will Micheletto be our coach next season? I'm buying Micheletto's the coach next season. I mean, if you think about it, He's coached a team with 10 freshmen, almost unprecedented in the hockey East. Had them with more than 10 wins. I mean, that's more than last year when they had a whole first line full of seniors. And, you know, I, I'd like everybody to imagine a scenario where Brendan Montar's here the entire year. I mean, you can, I think you can at least add five more wins. A lot of those one-goal games, I think, come back. He has a lot of support of the players. You know, from what John Liam and I have seen in the press room, a lot of the players like Coach Micheletto, Troy Power. Yeah, I agree with that. Troy Power last week talked about how great he was managing emotions. Frank talked about how he's not a yeller. He's a, he has a great coaching style. He said inconsistent play from the goalies and defensemen. That's not his fault. That's just a lack of performance, which there's only so much a coach can do. I think he has the support of his players. I think he's a great guy, and I think he's a great coach that's here to stay. All right, guys, well, I appreciate all your input. John, you're acting up a little bit over there. I like it. We, got a nice, we had a nice hockey segment for the entire year, and uh, you'll see these guys again here back next year. Thanks, guys. All right, we'll be right back to talk women's basketball, and we'll have a top five highlight video of this season. Stay tuned.